I'm uh, James Ferrier. I'm the tech services manager here in Eastern Canada. So I manage our, our R&D program for the East, uh, focusing on our row crops and horticulture crops. I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, Metribuse and Alone in soybeans. So uh, many of you are really familiar with Metribuzin. Metribuzin has been used a lot in the past. And uh, as we got into, you know, more Roundup Ready and Liberty Link soybeans, that kind of thing, we started to see a decline in, in Metribuzin use. But in the last, say, five or six years, we've seen Metribuzin uh, come back into the spotlight. And currently, we're seeing somewhere around a million acres per year in Eastern Canada um, being treated with Metribuzin. And uh, a lot of that reason is because it's... Uh, really good as an add-in for things like uh, flea bane and uh, giving a little bit extra burn down activity. But uh, a problem that I've started to notice here uh, on my side of the business is that we've really focused on singular actives as we're building uh, herbicide programs. And that goes back to a lot of the research being done uh, you know, by myself, by the university guys and that kind of thing where we focus on one weed at a time and uh, we focus on one active that can, can help that. So. You know, what comes to mind is things like uh, safrafenicil um, in, in Aragon and seeing that uh, continued use only for uh, things like flea bane. And suddenly we're starting to see some, some post group 14 resistance there showing up uh, in things like water hemp when we weren't thinking about water hemp and we we're only thinking about flea bane control. So we're using safrafenicil. Suddenly we've switched a little bit and we started saying, well, let's just add in one more active. Let's add in just metribuzin. We do see that uh, the addition of metribuzin to, to a burn down, it, it does give us some, some benefits. So here's a slide from Peter Sikama showing the addition of metribuzin to, to Blackhawk. And yeah, Blackhawk on its own, it's okay on flea bane. We add the metribuzin and suddenly we're getting you know, almost 100% control, but we're really only thinking about flea bane in that situation. We're not thinking about all the other weeds that we need to worry about. And that's why we're starting to see evolution of, of resistance in a, in a lot of areas for targeting one weed and we're not thinking about the holistic approach to that whole field and what other weeds are there and what other weeds we need to control. So what, one of the weak spots uh, that we're starting to see with this approach is like I say resistance. So we've seen that Metribuzin is starting to build a fair bit of resistance here uh, in eastern Canada. So we've got a photo that I took there on the left, uh, that's water hemp. Uh, that was during my master's uh, research with Dr. Sikama, looking at water hemp control. And we know that there's a fair amount of water hemp resistant to metribuzin in the province. The next photo is a uh, red root pigweed. We know that there's metribuzin resistance in, in red root pigweed. Next one's green pigweed, same thing. We're seeing resistance there. And the last one's common ragweed. Um, as anybody who knows Adam Bent here, he'll tell you that it's called common ragweed because it's common, it's in every grower's field. And uh, it's something that almost every grower struggles with. So we really need to learn how to control some of these weeds. And I think the natural approach for a new farm is to build upon some of these, uh, some of these single active uh, programs and take a more holistic approach, like I said, to try and target all those weeds um, with a variety of modes of action, try and get some overlapping modes of action, some complementary controls. And I think that's what uh, we've done here at Bifecta. So we have a lot of GM growers that use Bifecta. We also have a lot of IP growers who use it as a planned two-pass uh, herbicide approach. So I think Bifecta is one of your better pre-setup programs. It goes really well with their glyphosate, um, enhances your Blackhawk, enhances your, your Aragon, enhances your, uh, your Elevore, any of those products that you might want to use. Um, the Suncor is in there to help uh, with your burn down. It's also given us you know, a little bit of suppression on some grasses, and a little bit of broadleaf control. But when we add in the Fumi Oxygen, we start to see that control um, improve quite a bit. And I think a lot of the reason is because of how those two actives work. So as we all know, or many of us will know, um, Metribuzin works in the plants. Um, by sort of blocking the electron transport chain from photosystem two to photosystem one, causes a buildup of uh, electrons in the plant, um, which causes uh, an overload of triplet chlorophyll, an overload of singlet oxygen free radicals, which basically stops carotenoid biosynthesis, stops the production of chlorophyll, causes those cells to, to rupture and those uh, free radicals to break out and uh, wreck the cell membrane. Those cells dry and disintegrate. 
Same thing happens with flumioxin. So flumioxin works in a slightly different part of the plant um, in the protox chain. But what it does is essentially causes a, a buildup of free radicals as well and causes that cell membrane destruction. All the internal parts of your cell leak out and it basically uh, dehydrates and disintegrates and causes plant death. So basically what we're seeing when we have a product like Bifecta, the Metrofusin and the, and the Valterra are working together and they're essentially causing the same outcome for, for that plant cell. So we seem to be getting you know, really nice additive uh, control with those two molecules together. And uh, the next slide that I'm going to show you is a photo of, of that working uh, really well. So uh, this slide is a photo from the University of Guelph's uh, Woodstock Research Farm. And uh, we do see um, you know, some heavy, heavy fleabane there. Um, most of that fleabane would be resistant to glyphosate. There's some pretty heavy ragweed in there, um, some pigweed, lamb's quarters, and even some covers. Uh, what we see, this is actually Blackhawk and Bifecta. It's only labeled as Bifecta. We see that really excellent burn down from the Blackhawk and the Bifecta combination on that flea bane. And uh, we're also seeing really excellent uh, residual control on that ragweed, pigweed, lamb's quarters. And we even got really good control of that over that was coming up in that field. So I think that's why um, this product works so well is that we, we see those two actives building on each other and complementing your burn down, give you an excellent setup. And uh, in this case, this plot was essentially weed, weed free right through till, till harvest. One of the other things we really see with Bifecta is it's really improving our consistency of control. So we did trials a few years ago, looking at things like Aragon alone, Blackhawk alone, adding in Sencor, adding in Bifecta and seeing what the outcome of those plots would be. So we saw with things like you know, Aragon alone, Aragon Sencor alone, um, pretty variable control. But when we start adding things like Bifecta in, we're seeing a lot more consistent control. And a lot of that, like I say, is, is due to uh, the Valterra in there, just enhancing um, enhancing the metrics and enhancing your, your post activity. Next thing uh, that I wanna show you quickly is uh, another, another field photo. And this is taken at one of the University of Guelph Ridgetown uh, research sites down at Staples. This is actually a grower's field. And uh, I think this really shows the strength of Bifecta as an all around broad acre setup product. This particular field has uh, a fair amount of glyphosate resistant uh, uh, water hemp as well as glyphosate resistant flea bean. And I'd say that Bifecta is definitely our our lead product for flea bane. Uh, it goes out on any acre that's got flea bane. It's also going to help you pick up some of your water hemp. But, if, but uh, what we see here, uh, these plots are sprayed with glyphosate over the top to burn them down. And obviously, all that's left on the on the left there is um, your, your water hemp and your Canada flea bane. And you can see your grass carcasses there. On the right, it uh, was applied with bifecta with the glyphosate. And uh, obviously, we've burnt off that uh, that grass, but we've also kept those flea bane and those uh, water hemp seeds from emerging. So uh, giving us really excellent control down there. Um, you know, great crop tolerance and a, an easy setup product for a grower to use. I find that, uh, like I say, by using these these overlapping modes of action and these complementary modes of action, um, we're really increasing our quality uh, of weed control, making it really easy for the grower and at the end of the day having a clean field and making it easy for those growers to manage their resistant weeds.